Mike Downey is a celebrated storyteller, a writer, director, and producer of numerous documentaries, as well as the founder of Edgar Land Films. He is the winner of a Canadian Screen Award for Best Science Documentary for his film, Invasion of the Brain Snatchers. Please welcome Mike Downey to the stage as he introduces The Secret Path. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, I, I just... Uh, there's just a couple things I'd like to say um, before you get a chance to watch. Uh, Gord's performance from last year at Roy Thompson Hall, um, which is extraordinary and important. Um, I'd like to thank everybody uh, across this country for their outpouring um, of grief and um, and sadness. And I can tell you, my family um, has been supported by that. It's made it harder and easier to accept Gord's passing. Harder, because you realize that Gord has um, touched so many people and uh, is now being missed by so many people. And easier, because we, we see how many people uh, across this country truly cared about my brother and that's an extraordinary thing and it's something I'll take with me for the rest of my life. <clears throat> my wish is that this incredible tidal wave of emotion be captured. That it not just flow across the country, that we divert part of that emotion and energy towards something that Gordy really believed in. And that is to improve the lives of indigenous people. And I think, you know, I think opportunity is a funny thing. When Gord and I started to try to tell Chani's story uh, really five years ago, um, Gord wrote these poems. We, were, we wanted to get a writer to write a, a story that we could perhaps adapt into a, into a film. And we were pursuing that and, and, and it wasn't going very far, very fast. And Gord started uh, writing these poems because we had this research package from Ian, At starting with Ian Adams' incredible article from McLean's in 1967 about what happened to this little boy named Charlie Wenjack. Um, Gord started going through this research package that we had on his death and the inquiry um, that was launched after Ian's article. And uh, he started writing these poems. And, and I can tell you, uh, to, my, uh, to my great shame, uh, when he called me the first time and said, I have some news, I, I asked immediately, if we'd heard back from one of the writers that we approached about, about taking this project on. And, uh, and he told me, no, but I've written a poem. Duke, you'll appreciate this. <laughs> you won't appreciate my response. But actually, my response was, uh, as an older brother, uh, I, uh, I said, uh, that's great, Gord, that's great. Inside, I thought, what, what, what are we going to do with a poem? We're, we're trying to bring a story into the mainstream. Um, so clearly, I looked right through that opportunity. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And thankfully, I was smart enough 
uh, not to try to dissuade Gord, because he kept going and he wrote nine more. And, and I think a lot of you know that those 10 poems became 10 songs, and then they helped inspire Jeff Lemire to uh, create the incredible graphic novel, and then we put it all back together again for the animated film. Um, but, you know, I think opportunity is a funny thing. I, I think we often assume that it's, you know, uh, on a pedestal with, um, oh, I don't know, like a nice sort of white or black sort of drape thing, and it's well lit, and there's the opportunity, and you just have to take it. And I think true opportunity is actually very easy to overlook, and it's easy to look right through it. And that's a, that makes it, you know, I think that's what makes opportunity so awesome in its potential. The opportunity we have right now in front of us is an opportunity, I believe, to really change the way Canadians think about their own country. I think that opportunity has been working its way towards the surface for some time, and, and I really feel like it's, it's really on the surface now, that there's this incredible opportunity for our country. The Downey Wenjack Fund, uh, Gordon and I put in place really to do one thing, and that was to capture uh, some of the outpouring uh, that was uh, started last year when uh, Gord made that call from the stage in Kingston, and then followed, we followed it up with the, with the release of Secret Path, and, and we knew that there was going to be quite a reaction. People were curious as to what Gord's next project was, and they wanted to know more, and we wanted to capture as much of that as possible. And we wanted to, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, you understand the cycle that these things go through, and, they, and it can be very, it can get very high, you can get a lot of attention uh, uh, but it has, to, it, it has to move on and the next story needs to come along. And we created the fund to try to capture some of that emotion from a year ago and put that to work. And so we started this fund. We really wanted to um, inspire Canadians to, you know, if, if there was a, you know, if that, uh, the secret path played a part in awareness, that's great. Uh, it is playing a part in education, along with some other great resources that our incredible teachers are using. The next piece is action. And the Downey Wenjack Fund is really there to um, tell Canadians it's okay to act. We want to support you. Um, we want you to whatever it is you do, figure out how you could do that that would improve Indigenous lives. And I, I you're uh, already, we're, um, we've been giving out some grants. It's not much. It's not really about the money for, you know, the design of this. It's about the hearts. It's about people doing something, giving of their time, giving of themselves, and creating relationships. When Gord and Pat and I went up to Ogoki Post, and met the Wenjacks for the first time to show them what we'd done, to ask for their blessing. And I'd been talking to Pearl over the years, and she knew what, what we'd been doing. This is our opportunity to show them. That face-to-face -face meeting changed all three of us. It, we, there was a relationship that was created in that moment of two families that were going that had been going through some tough times. The Wenjacks had been going through, as Gordy said, you know, when they talked about Chani, you'd guess he died 15 minutes ago and not 50 years ago. And they had other tragedies that they were carrying with them. And we, like a lot of families in Canada, we had our own version of that. But being together and creating a relationship changed everything. And it made us feel so much, you know, the weight that we, we were feeling it, made it feel lighter. And we, we really want to perpetuate that kind of opportunity for non-Indigenous Canadians to uh, create these kind of relationships. And we think we can do it with, with, um, by inspiring people to act. We don't need to send rockets off into space. We have a bit of a criteria where we uh, ask people to 
you know, uh, make sure they have an indigenous partner and that, the, you know, this is, it's gonna help in some, in some way, whatever it is that, that they wanna do. It's really about action. It's really about action. And we think that if we plant enough of these seeds across the country, and if we show each other what can be done, we can continue to do that. The big work lies ahead. There's no doubt. There's a crisis going on, as we all know, in communities uh, across, within families and communities across this country. And it's gonna require the resources of every level of government that we have. Where we think we could help a little bit is to keep inspiring Canadians. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I, I visualize it standing behind my brother Gord as a Canadian who decided he cared and he'd seen and heard enough and he wanted to do something. And, that, and that's all we really want to do. We just want to inspire individuals to move forward. Um, with the fund, we are supporting educators. Um, as you saw in the, in the short film, there's 40,000 teachers that we know of that are using Secret Path in the classroom. We're supporting them and we're creating a network for them to communicate with each other and share lesson plans. We will continue to do that and then we will add other pieces that are working in the classroom to tell the story of residential schools and to tell the story of, uh, of our indigenous. We also are supporting the Truth and Reconciliation Center. Uh, there is a trust within there that we are, uh, that all the, ro all the uh, royalties from the Secret Path, from Jeff Lemire, Gore Downey, uh, went into the trust, and that, that trust is going to try to find more of these missing children that are in unmarked graves, as Duke referred to. So we wanna, we wanna help support the center and never forget the survivors. And the third piece I just told you about, we want, we want Canadians to, uh, to roll up their sleeves and, and do something. And I think if we do that, that opportunity is going to start to show itself on the beautiful little plinth and the nice lighting. Because that opportunity, I believe, is to change the very idea of who we think we are as a country. I'm gonna let you in on something. My brother, Gord, he didn't love the flag waving. And for those of you that have been at a hip show, there was a lot of flag waving at those hip shows. And you know what? It was a lot of fun. He wasn't that comfortable with, with, with all that. And we often talked about our national identity and how it just kind of gets crunched down into this hockey sticks and coffee cups. <laughs> and not a lot more. Yeah, and you, you kind of saw that, I think, in some of the rollout of some of the marketing around Canada's 150th, you know? There weren't, there weren't too many things that kind of, I mean, they, there was things that made you feel that kind of pride, but I believe, my brother believed, that the missing piece is the fact that we're not a young country. We're not 150 years old. We're over 10,000 years old, 12,000, we are. And, but we can't be that country unless we have a ribbon of indigeneity going right down the middle. That's who we can be. We can be a country that shook off, you know, its colonial past, that pulled out of the shadow of a great superpower to the south and just became who we are. We're, I believe we're a compassionate people, but you know, there is some evidence to the contrary. So we have some work to do. And if we can get enough Canadians to start to think about, you know, we missed that opportunity. Our founding fathers missed that opportunity 150 years ago. They stepped right over it. They looked right through it. We got a chance for a reset right now. And we, the more that we can um, appreciate, you know, um, people like Duke Redberg and their teaching and, their, and our understanding of ceremony or, or to begin to understand the teachings and ceremony, the more we are all going to gain by it. You know, 
you learn something in 12,000 years. It only makes sense. So I'd like to, um, I'd just like to wrap up by saying um, my brother and I really, I mean, we crisscross this country on our own way, me making films, him, you know, in the back of a tour bus. And we met a lot, we've met a lot of Canadians uh, along the way. And we met a lot of really good people over the years. I think there's a chance in this country right now to show the world who we really are. We can do it, but we need to get started. Thank you very much.